the habits that you have outside of your business are essentially either self-sabotaging or setting the foundation for your firm success. People often ask me, Britt, how do you do it all? How do you have X amount of multi six and seven figure businesses and juggle it all and still seem happy and peaceful? In fact, one of my friends asked, how are you so positive all the time? It seems exhausting. And it made me think back to Bitchney before my evolution and spiritual growth and just the little hairdresser who thought she had a big dream. That version of me was fueled by anger and it cost me a lot. It was very expensive. And in fact, it took a lot of effort to be angry. So when I heard her say that, and I get this question asked all the time, how do you do it all? How do you manage it? It really got me thinking about the secret sauce to success when it comes to six and seven figures and beyond. The thing that they're not telling you about and the thing that they're, char they're charging you for all these courses, make more money and build your funnels and grow your email list and all of that is great. But you have to go back to that why saying health is the first wealth. And if you don't have a foundation rooted with solid, vibrant energy, that uh, protection where you're managing your time, you're managing your energy output and input and you're really taking care of yourself if you're missing that foundational piece then it doesn't matter how much money you acquire how much is in the bank because you'll you're not devoid of burnout you're not devoid of physical ailments or dis-ease I find even Marie Forleo a friend and mentor I was listening to her share with Jenna Kutcher that it took her all the way up until her 40, mid 40s to realize that she was still operating in hustle culture because her body was filled with tumors and she had to have an emergency hysterectomy. This was the same story that happened to my mom in 2012. When she learned how to talk and walk after her stroke recovery, I said, mom, why did you do this to yourself? I had just watched the secret documentary and our thoughts create our reality. So mom, you must have done this to yourself. And the truth is she had been bleeding for months and ignoring her body and in ignoring her body she lost so much blood that her body started throwing clots and in one of those clots it landed in the brain and caused her to have a paralyzing stroke that had her immobile and inaudible for months it took it was a long hard road of recovery but when she finally learned how to string a few words together i asked her a hard truth i said mom why did you do this to yourself and she said, without hesitation, which was uh, quite shocking for her progress, she said, because everybody needed something from me. And that's when I realized I was following in the same steps as my overgiving, compassionate, empathetic mother. Although she, her heart was good, her boundaries were bad. And so this is why I wanted to bring you this video today to remind you that although it seems basic, your self-care and the habits that you have outside of your business are essentially either self-sabotaging or setting the foundation for your firm success. So I want you to really take an inventory of your energy. When you talk to all these high level CEOs and, and boss babe go-getters, the conversation that's coming up right now specifically specifically in 2024 is time freedom. How do we get our time back? We can make more money, but we cannot make more time. And we're starting to realize that that currency is to me what the real success is. When you can spend your time not your money, but your time doing the things that you actually enjoy. Even the process behind your business content creation and how you show up and serve. If you're not enjoying that, then we've fallen off of the true mission of being in service. We are here to share our passion, our talents, our gifts, and what comes natural and easy to us. So if you're someone who just like me started a ton of businesses, lots of multi-passionate ideas and projects, and you've come, you've come quite a way and you're like, okay, what now? <laughs> My advice to you is to simplify and get back to the basics. Base, basics? Basics? Basis? Basics? basics, whatever, get back to the basics of self-care. When I stepped out from behind the chair of my six-figure salon suite to teach self-love and empowerment, I was so adamant, although it was against the grain, that I was gonna teach Shine School, a course on self-love and, and self-love mastery. And meanwhile, I had the course written out, how to be a six-figure hairstylist, how to own your suite, how to show up on social media. I knew all the business building things, like I had done that. I had been a six-figure stylist since the day I walked out of beauty school. That first year, I 
found out that it was like $333 for five days a week and that'll get you six figures. I, I had the number, I had the clarity and I was off to the races. So I had been a six figure stylist for so many years. So although I had already written out a full framework and I, I, it's still sitting in my Google Docs today, I've got eight modules on how to become a six figure stylist, which you might see come out later this year now that I've spent 10 years teaching about success, no, self-love. We're gonna be teaching about success because what I knew back then is that if you want success, it starts with self-love and nobody was telling you that 10 years ago. So I made a very soulful, conscious decision to leave that six-figure sweet life stylist program in the Google Docs and really focus on teaching you how to love yourself, how to reclaim your power and confidence so that you can believe in yourself, you can become your own cheerleader and make friends with your inner mean girl because as you scale in business, so does your fear. So does those inner demons and thoughts and like, oh my God, your self-image, are you good enough? No, no, no. All of that begins to grow as well. So if you don't know how to create a healthy relationship with yourself and manage your energy and self-care, no one's gonna come do it for you. So if you don't fill your own cup, as you grow in your business, you're either gonna find burnout, you're gonna want to give up and tear it all down because you're lacking the energy and you feel overwhelmed, which can lead to anger and frustration, and then that takes you out of the creative zone. So your simple reminder is to get back to self-care. This is the year to prioritize you so that your business can grow. If you don't fill your cup, then you won't have enough to give. And if we're in business, we're in the business of service. And if we don't have the energy to give, then we aren't doing our guests, our clients, our whatever you call them, whatever they are, patients in your business, whatever, however you refer to the people that you show up and serve, we are doing them a disservice if we are not taking care of ourselves first so that we have an abundance of energy to give and we're not coming from a place of resentment. So if you wanna take your business to the next level in 2024, it's gonna start with a basic self-care foundation. Making sure your nutrition, your sleep, your water, all of that is at an optimal level because I guarantee your habits are secretly self-sabotaging your success in business. So really do an inventory and check out what, where, where am I leaking energy? Where am I doing too much and not getting anything back? Where am I wasting time, um, you know, doing things on my to-do list that aren't my zone of genius? I want you to really clean up your energy leaks and take inventory on what are the tasks that only you can do and give yourself permission to let go of control. It's okay. Give yourself an energy audit so that you can see where those leaks are and you can take a conscious CEO choice to make a change. And I know you don't want to do this alone. So if you've been looking for a mentor to team up with for accountability, some coaching, and a proven step-by-step -step roadmap that works for you finding your unique process, I'm not going to give you what works for me. I'm going to show you the framework and how you can find what works for you. So book a one hour coaching call with me. We can dive into your business, your soul, and really see those blocks and obstacles so that we can make a plan and a path around. And if not freaking right through them because we are not going to let fear, doubt, or a lack of plan stop us from achieving the goals that we've set for ourselves this year. I look forward to being your coach this year. So all you have to do is go to brittanycarmichael.com slash tarot, where you'll get a magical one hour coaching call with me. We'll use the cards, the stars, and my intuitive wisdom in running multiple six and seven figure businesses over the last 15 to 20 years. Oh my gosh. I feel old. <laughs> so I'm gonna share my proven strategies and my intuitive insight to help you up level and expand. So I cannot wait to coach with you in the new year. Until then, I'll catch you later. Peace.